Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Airflow Measurement and Control Range Overview and Methods to Improve IAQ, which will be presented by Howard Smith. We really appreciate you joining us today. My name is Ron Pilkowitz, and I will be moderating your call today. Because we know you may want to watch this webinar again, it will be recorded and posted on Bulimo's YouTube site. And we will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation, so we'd like to hear back from you. So at any time, I invite you to type your questions into the question box. You don't have to wait till the end of the presentation. And I will read them aloud during our question and answer session. How we will answer as many questions as we have time for, but rest assured if we do not get to your question, you will get an email with a response. If you are having any difficulty with this webinar, please simply type me a note in the chat box and I will try to assist you. At this time, I'd like now to present you to Howie Smith. Thank you, Howie. Thanks, Ron. Um, so as you mentioned, my name is Howie Smith. I'm the product manager for the Airflow Measurement and Control range. So today we're going to have a, a range overview. I'm going to go over some of the applications that you might be able to use these products. And then at the end, I'm going to touch on um, just some notes about indoor air quality. So as I mentioned, we'll start with the range overview. We'll go over some of the existing products that we have available uh, today. Uh, and then I also wanna talk about some, some new products that, uh, that are also now available, but um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't advertised yet. And then finally, um, I'm gonna to touch on some different applications that you can use these products, uh, either variable air volume control, constant air volume control, duct pressurization, room pressurization, and then I'll, I'll touch on some other applications, but I won't go into as great of detail. And then after that, I will talk about a little bit about how you can use these products for uh, better indoor air quality. So starting with the existing product, um, we have the compact line. So this product line is named because of the integrated pressure sensor, it makes it a more compact solution than having two separate products, you know, the actuator and the differential pressure sensor. Uh, it's available in 45 inch pound and uh, 90 inch pound sizes or five newton meters, 10 newton meters. Um, it has an integrated D3 differential pressure sensor. So the D just means that it's a differential uh, pressure sensor and the three means that it's the Limo's third iteration. Uh, it's been available for a long time, but the, the third iteration has made you know, tremendous improvements versus the last, uh, the last iteration, mainly that is much more resistant to dust and, and other contaminations. Um, we have a dash mod version available that's both BACnet MSTP and Modbus RTU compatible. Um, we also have an MP bus version, which is equipped with near field communication capability, which is really nice, uh, especially during commissioning. If you need to set your nominal uh, flow rate or nominal pressure, um, you can do that with your cell phone rather than needing to connect to the actuator using PC tool. Uh, you can use either zero to 10 volt feedback or two to 10 volt feedback. And you can have this feedback uh, either send a uh, signal for the position of the actuator, the volumetric flow rate or the differential pressure that it's reading. Uh, another feature that these products have is what we call open loop control. And this is nice if you know perhaps you want to control this actuator by its position, but still receive that pressure or flow feedback for your controller to do its own internal calculations. So if you put these actuators in open loop control, this is possible. Then the last thing I wanted to mention about these products is that we do also have linear actuators available that have either four inch, eight inch, or 12 inch stroke options available. That's for more unique uh, applications where you still wanna be measuring flow. We also have the induct actuators, uh, which is a really uh, nice solution in my opinion. Um, these go into your duct work and it mounts with a single point uh, up here, a single screw. Uh, it uses a thermo anemometer to make its uh, volumetric flow measurements. Um, and it, it comes with an attached damper blade of sizes of four inches, five inches, or six inches. Uh, the CMBV line, it can, can provide feedback in either position or volumetric flow. But if you are using uh, Belimo MP bus, which is a proprietary bus network from Belimo, you can also get uh, duct temperature feedback uh, as well. So a, a nice advantage of using MP bus. Um, when you are commissioning these actuators, you have a choice of three nominal air velocities, just a, a drop-down menu, 
and then your volumetric flow rate will be calculated, you know, based upon the velocity uh, and the, the duct size, just a, a basic calculation. So I went over those pretty quickly because uh, um, they, they've been available, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about one of the, the new product uh, that's available, which is the uh, universal range. And this consists of a sensor slash communications module, as well as an actuator. So I will start with uh, the sensor slash communications module. So we do have three versions available. Uh, the first of which is the VRU-D3 dash BAC. And if you notice, this product also has D3 in the name. That's uh, not a coincidence. That's because it uses the same exact D3 differential pressure sensor that is used in the compact. As I mentioned, or actually, I don't think I mentioned this, it's a quasi-static differential pressure sensor, which means that even though it is a flow-through pressure sensor, the flow is so low, it's, it's almost considered uh, a static differential pressure sensor. Uh, you can use this in both uh, variable air volume or constant air volume applications, as well as duct pressure applications. Uh, we also have the VRU-M1-BAC. Um, the M in this case stands for uh, membrane differential pressure sensor. And because it's a one, it's the first iteration of this sensor. Um, one advantage of this sensor over the D3 sensor is that it's suitable for contaminated air applications. And you would use this in the same same type of applications, um, you know, VAV, CAV, and duct pressure. Finally, we have the VRU-M1R-BAC, which also uses a membrane differential pressure sensor. And it's actually the same differential pressure sensor as the M1, except for this has been calibrated to plus or minus 75 pascals. And what that does is it makes it um, uh, suitable for room pressure applications. So if you're trying to create slightly positive pressure or slightly negative pressure, uh, this sensor will control much better than any of the others in that range. All versions of uh, this product are both BACnet MSTP and Modulus RTU compatible. Um, and all versions are also NFC compatible. Um, this is a really nice benefit in my opinion, um, because even without the product powered on, you can select what application um, you're in, whether it's you know pressure control or flow control. And then based upon what application you choose, it'll indicate what fields you need to fill in. So you're not gonna have to fill in any variables that aren't pertinent to your application. And you can also, like as you're doing that, you're setting you know, maybe your maximum and minimum flows, maybe a nominal uh, flow velocity, maybe maximum minimum pressures, whatever it is for your application, you can fill it in um, using your phone um, rather than you know, having to connect to the actuator with a computer. Um, these products will not be in our 2021 product guide and price list. And uh, the main reason for that is that um, it's not UL listed. However, it is CE listed, which uh, was sufficient for some of our customers. So we decided that rather than make them wait, um, we would uh, allow this product to be, to be bought. Just to kind of give you a, a feel for what it looks like on the inside. So um, right here is a plug for where the actuator connects into. So uh, it's the v dash VST actuator line and the ST in, in this actually is a German word. Um, we're a, um, or a Swiss company. So this actually stands for plug. And that's because the actuator and um, or sensor and communications model are, are plug and play. Um, not that we expect you would need this, but just in case something isn't going wrong with the first plug, um, there is a spare uh, connection that you can use. Um, this is where you would put uh, in your wires when you're when you're wiring it. Um, but there's a couple of things that we've done in order to make it a lot more user friendly, a lot easier to commission. Um, the first of this is that these walls here and here are actually removable, as are the terminal blocks. So rather than having to snake a wire through and, at an awkward angle and then you know, then tighten it, you can get yourself into an ergonomic position, you know, tighten the wires and then plug the terminal blocks right back in. Um, there's also a safety leash for the lid so that, you know, you know, the last thing you want to do is be 20 feet up in the air on a ladder and then, you know, drop the lid and have to go back down and go and pick it up again just to, to seal off the, uh, the product. So uh, that's another nice little feature. And then 
up here is uh, where the delta P sensor is. So the differential pressure sensor, whether or not it's the D3, M1, or M1R, it is always in this location. We do have uh, LED displays that also function as push buttons. So uh, if it's green, it means it's on. If it's blinking, it means that you know it's communicating with the assistant app. Um, and then there's also the ad adaptation uh, button. So you, you press that button and it'll run an adaptation. Um, it also can indicate when you're doing MP addressing. So during addressing, it'll be yellow. Um, when it's flashing, that means that you need to confirm that, um, that that is the address that you want. And then when you press the button, that is, um, that is your, you actually addressing it. Um, another nice uh, convenient feature is this magnet. So um, that's used to hold uh, what we call the zip-bt-nfc. It's essentially a, a Bluetooth dongle. So um, if you want to do commissioning via the assistant app um, and say you have either an Apple phone or even if you have an Android where you don't want to be holding it up to the product, you can just snap this uh, dongle into place. The magnet will hold it regardless of what position you're in um, or what position the actuator is in uh, or the sensor and communications module. And uh, even if it's upside down, so you could be you know, on, on the ground, not in an uncomfortable position and do the commissioning of this product. Um, However, if you still do wish to use um, Blimo's PC tool, there is a service socket where you can plug into it as well. Then moving on to the Dash VST actuator, um, we will have seven variants available in the Americas. Uh, I'm not gonna read through each one of them, but I'll, I'll essentially just give you the highlight. So, um, one important thing to note is that the Dash VST actuators are the only actuators that are compatible with the sensor and communications module. So you cannot take any standard Blimo actuator and um, plug it in to the sensor communication module and expect it to work. You need to use a Dash VST. Um, if you are looking for an airflow measurement control actuator and you need it to be either fail safe or quick running, you need to use these. Um, the compact line and the induct line both are non-fail safe and um, neither of them are quick running. So you need to, to look for one of these. As I mentioned earlier, they are plug and play. So it's really nice when you're commissioning, you don't have to worry about wiring. You just go and you, you plug it in and you're good to go. Um, these actuators come in Blimo gray. And another important point is that you'll notice there is no service plug here like you saw on the sensor and communications module. Um, and this is because all commissioning is done at, um, at the communications module. So uh, if you need to change anything at the actuator, you're not doing it at the actuator, if you're doing it at the sensor uh, and communications module. So um, now I've kind of given you an overview of the products, so I just want to touch on some of the applications where you'll most likely see them. So um, probably the most common application we see is either variable air volume or constant air volume. Um, so starting with the induct range, which is the, the smallest of, of the three, um, we have the CMBV range, um, which is best for low flow applications around 50 to 260 CFM is where we typically see them uh, being used. Uh, an important thing to note about uh, this product is that it does need to obtain the control signal from a room unit or a DDC controller. So even though it can sense what the flow is in the duct, it still needs to get that set point from something else to know how much flow it needs and what, what would be the appropriate flow for that application. Moving on to the compact line, um, this needs to be combined with an inflow or induct flow pickup device. So this could be something that uh, like the ZPD RE2, which is uh, an induct flow pickup device that Blimo offers, but it could also be any third party pickup device um, that, that you use. Uh, one of the nice things about the compact is that it can be calibrated for whatever flow pickup uh, you want. So based upon the characteristics of that pickup, you enter in um, those characteristics when commissioning, and now the compact knows, okay, for this differential pressure, this is the flow I have using this, this pickup device. 
Similarly to um, the induct range, it also needs to obtain a control signal from either a room unit, DDC controller. But one additional thing that this product can you do is that if you're using the dash mod, you can also uh, receive a set point signal from the uh, building management system. So either BACnet or, or Modbus. Generally, I would recommend using the, um, the compact line over the VRU in a VAV or a CAV application uh, because it's less expensive. You have just the, the one component versus the two, um, but there are cases when you would want to use um, the, the VRU. Then finally, moving on to the sensors and uh, sensor slash communications module. Um, for this application, you'd want to use either the VRU-D3-BAC or the VRU-M1-BAC. Um, similarly to the compact products, you also need to uh, combine this with an induct flow pickup device, but um, also it doesn't have to be Belimos, it could be anybody. So you can do the same uh, calibration for this product as you can with the compact. Uh, it also must obtain the control signal from the room unit uh, controller or BMS. So that's um, not, not anything different than the compact. Um, however, if you need to work in a, if you're doing VAV or CAV in a contaminated air application, so maybe it's uh, kitchen exhaust with greasy air or um, you know, industrial manufacturing exhaust, things like that, uh, you need to use the M1 sensor. So that's one instance of when you would use um, the, the VRU for VAV, even though it, it typically is more expensive. Another application um, I think is nice is uh, for duct pressure. So for this, we recommend either the VRU-D3-BAC or the VRU-M1-BAC. Um, for this setup, you need to combine it with an induct pressure sensor and also a reference pressure sensor. One important thing to, to be careful about when you're doing this is that uh, you really want to make sure that reference pressure sensor is in an area where there's not going to be any fluctuations, any pressure fluctuations. Uh, if you don't, then those pressure fluctuations are going to be transposed into your system. So if you put it in a room and somebody's constantly opening and closing doors, that's going to impact what's happening in your duct. So you really want to make sure you have it in, in a good location. Um, but a nice thing about this is that, you know, say you have a, a quarter with a lot of, you know, identical or similar rooms downstream. Uh, if you control the pressure of the duct, you don't necessarily have to measure the flow at each terminal unit. You essentially eliminated the um, pressure dependency of the system because you know the pressure in the duct is going to be uh, going to be constant. Uh, and then one last thing of note is that uh, if you're doing this with the D3 uh, version, or the, the dash D3, uh, you want to make sure the pressure lines are less than 65 feet. And that's just because uh, you could have some pressure drops in the line over that amount of distance. So uh, we prefer to use the, the M1. Moving on to room pressure, uh, for this, uh, our recommendation is to use the VRU-M1R-BAC uh, in combination with a, a quick running actuator. Um, same thing is with the duct pressure application. You need to combine this with a, um, a reference pressure pickup switch. So you want that to be in an area where the, uh, where the pressure isn't fluctuating. Um, then also, instead of a duct pressure pickup, you're going to need a, a room pressure pickup. Uh, a nice thing that you can use, um, uh, that you can do with this product is it has a, a built-in override um, where if you want it to, you know, say you have a door that opens that's connected to a switch, you can prevent the actuator from moving and trying to chase a, a pressure um, measurement uh, just to, or have it, you know, um, go back and forth multiple times chasing um, based upon just a normal operation, um, such as a door opening. You can have the actuator stay in place um, and, you know, which is good for making sure that you're not unnecessarily cycling it and reducing the life. There are other ways to do this uh, um, using our products. And uh, one example is uh, using the compact line. Uh, so essentially using the compact line, you need to have uh, both supply and air 
uh, a supply and exhaust air uh, control uh, using uh, either VAV or CAV. And the idea is that you ha have a constant ratio of either supply is more than exhaust, which would give you positive pressure, or uh, exhaust is always greater than supply, which would give you negative pressure. It's not as immediate a response nor as precise, but it does remain an option if you're looking to do something a little bit more uh, simply. Um, there are a few other uh, applications that, again, I'm not going to go into greater detail just based on time, but um, just to touch on them quickly, um, you can do volumetric flow measurement. So as an example, perhaps uh, you have a VRU and you're measuring flow in your supply duct, and you can use that to control the exhaust air somewhere else. And so maybe you really want to make sure that supply is equal to exhaust. You're not inadvertently creating any pressure differential. Um, you can also use room, um, you can do room pressure control, but with bypass. And essentially you want to do that when there's a tighter leakage requirement, perhaps a, a lab or a clean room would be an example of when you might want to do this. Uh, you can do cascade room pressure control. So I like to think of that as a combination of VAV and room pressure control. You have one uh, product that's monitoring room pressure. Um, and then, you know, based upon what the measured pressure what the measured pressure is versus desired pressure, either raise or lower the exhaust air um, in order to maintain that desired pressure. Uh, and then finally, there's the position control. So that's essentially you want to control uh, based upon damper position, but you still want that feedback. Um, so you can do that as well. So the last thing that I wanted to touch on um, was indoor air quality and, um, you know, with COVID-19, I, I really do feel like we've had a, a heightened awareness of to how important indoor air quality is as a way to maintain a healthy business environment. You know, there's been studies in the past with regards to sick building sy syndrome, but you know, now with COVID, the severity of these issues can be uh, a lot greater. So um, it's really brought indoor air quality to the forefront uh, in terms of HVAC. Um, luckily, though, these products, um, you know, have some capabilities that help uh, ensure that the proper amount of outside air is delivered to the to the building. Um, there is ASHRAE standard 62.1, which sets the standard for minimum ventilation rates, and that's based upon the area of the room, so you know, how big it is, but also its occupancy category and density. So, occupancy category. Uh, the example I like to give is, you know, with a gym. That's going to be that's going to require a lot more fresh air per person because these people are active, they're producing more CO2, they're sweating. Um, so you're going to need more fresh air to keep that air at a good level rather than somebody sitting in an office building. So that's that's the category. But then the, you have the density, which also is an important consideration, and that's how many people are going to be in that room. You know, a, a good example to show the importance of that um, is either a college classroom or a lecture hall. Now, both of these, the students are gonna be doing the same thing they're gonna be sitting down, hopefully paying attention. Um, and then uh, in the classroom, you know, you're gonna have a smaller number of people per area than in a lecture hall, because a lecture hall is just one seat after another, after another, after another, looking at the, uh, the presenter on the stage, whereas a classroom, you know, they typically have their own desk, they're more spread out. So, you know, you're gonna need more airflow when you have the, the room with more people per area. Um, so a nice thing about these uh, products that any product and not necessarily a Belimo product, but any product capable of uh, constant air volume or variable air volume control can maintain uh, whatever airflow um, ASHRAE says is the, uh, the standard minimum. And I, I do want to point out that's um, the minimum. That's not necessarily recommended, but um, these products can not only maintain this uh, flow, but provide feedback that is being delivered. And that's and specific to these products, that's regardless of pressure fluctuations in the system. So if you have you know, lower pressure, perhaps uh, you, know, you have a filter that's, that's clogged, um, you know, these, these products will react and open up further to make sure that you're still getting that amount of fresh outdoor air. Uh, an example with these products could be, you know, if you're using an LF or an NF, which are, are fail-safe products um, with a VRU-D3-BAC, you could control an outside air damper, um, you know, measuring and controlling that you're hitting these outside airflow requirements um, 
that that's needed by all the zones that are served by that particular air handling unit or rooftop unit. Um, then also, um, separate from airflow, but when talking about room pressurization, um, you can also use room pressurization as a technique to mitigate flow of uh, or spread of contaminants. And the example there I would give is um, you know a VRU dash M1R dash BAC could create a negative negative pressure differential in a COVID-19 patient's room, like in an isolation room. Essentially, when you create that negative pressure differential, if somebody were to open a, a door to the corridor, you're going to have the air from the corridor going into the room and not the other way around. You're not going to have any potentially contaminated air moving out into the corridor and, you know, and spreading the, the virus. You'd have the the contaminated air would be safely exhausted uh, somewhere where there's there's no no occupancy. So really are a few different techniques that you can do to help improve uh, indoor air quality. And that's all I have. So um, I guess with that, I can open it up to questions. Okay, thank you very much, Howie. At this time, I would ask you to type any questions into the question box and we'll, we have time for a couple, but know that you will get an answer via email. And if you think of any questions after this webinar, you can email us at training at us.belimo.com. Uh, I'll go through a couple of the questions that have come through. First one, okay. will the VRU products be in the 2021 PGPL or on our website? Okay, um, so short answer is no, they will not. Uh, and because these products are not UL listed, we really didn't want to give anybody the ability to just go and buy them and then to use them in an application where they might not meet the specification. So uh, we really wanted all orders to come through product management so that we could review to make sure that it is acceptable. Um, however, with that said, um, once they are UL listed, they will be added to the website and the PGPL. So we're hoping that's going to be sometime soon, but I don't have a, a firm date on that. Um, and you might ask, like, you know, why add them at all if they're uh, not UL listed? But the reason is they were already available um, for uh, for Europe because of the CE listing, and we decided that rather than have customers in the Americas who could use these products uh, with the CE listing, rather than have them wait, we wanted to get them the ability to order them as soon as possible. Excellent. One more question: Do these products require the use of a third-party controller? So for the most part, yes, uh, these products will require a third party controller. Blimo isn't a control supplier um, and these products need to receive their set point signal from either a room unit or a controller. The only exception to this, I would say, would be the Dash Mod and Dash BC products, which can receive their, their set point signal via, via the bus. Um, and maybe one point to clarify as I spoke, um, the, I know dash mod and dash, dash BAC sounds like, okay, that's the Modbus version and that's the backnut version, but both the dash mod and the dash BAC can do both Modbus RTU and backnet MSTP. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Why have a VRU with a D3 <clears throat> sensor if you already have the compact model with the D3 sensor? That's a good question. Um, so I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the compact with the D3 sensor generally would be used over the VRU with the D3 sensor. Um, and as I mentioned, it's it's only one component, and so it's typically a less expensive setup. Um, the exception is this: if um, if you need either fail-safe or quick running, um, currently the only airflow measurement control actuators with these uh, capabilities are the Dash VATs, so the ones that function with the VRU. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's all we have time for right now. Before we end the call, I'd like to remind you to follow Belimo on social media to keep informed about what's happening. And I'd like you to keep your eyes open for our next invitation, which will be for a webinar on March 17th at one o'clock Eastern time. Frank DiPaolo will be presenting on maintaining health, safety, and comfort with proper IAQ. Again, thank you, Howie, for presenting, and thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your day.